What's up y'all, it's Mr. Canada. In this video, we're gonna be learning about what rate of change is and the definition of rate of change. So this is gonna be a two part video. So in this one, I'm just gonna talk about what rate of change is. And in the next video, we're gonna be looking into more examples about how rate of change is gonna be the exact same thing as slope. So look into the other video if you need more practice with slope. This one's gonna be mainly about what definitions are attached to rate of change. So let's go ahead and get started. So what is a rate of change to begin with? So a rate of change is basically one of those like super important concepts that you learn in Algebra 1 because it just comes up so often when you're talking about linear functions and pretty much it can be applied whenever you're talking about any type of line. So basically a rate of change is a rate that describes how one quantity changes with respect to another quantity. So an example would be, um, let's just say as you're buying more things at the mall, you are losing money, you have less money. Or as you build up your business, as you sell more things, you will get more money as time goes on. So that is what a rate of change is. We wanna to try to establish a relationship, a connection of two quantities and see whether the rate of change is positive, meaning that it's gonna go up, or whether your rate of change is negative, meaning that it's gonna go down. So we're gonna go ahead and explore that with two examples that more or less uh, are going to incorporate this super important idea of rate of change. So let's look into our first example here. You are starting a business on selling small plants. You know, the cute little succulent plants. If you guys don't know what succulents are, basically it's like, if you've, maybe you've seen it on TV or maybe you've seen it at the mall. Basically there's like these really, really cute plants that are like small and green like that's like that's helpful basically they're like this they're like these cute little like little teeny plants but they're so adorable anyways so after the startup cost you currently have four dollars in your pocket before selling any plants for every three plants that you sell you make two dollars create a table and graph for this scenario let x be the plants that you sell and let y be the total profit so we want to start exploring this idea of rate of change using these using this scenario. So one really important thing whenever you're working with a word problem is always think about the beginning of the problem. So I like to think of the beginning as the number zero because it basically tells me that I haven't done any kind of work or nothing has been bought, nothing has been sold, etc. So basically you want to think about what the zero means at the beginning. Well in this problem since x is the number of plants that you sell you want to think about, okay, if I don't sell any plants, what is the value of Y when I don't sell any plants? Well, in this case, if we read back, you currently have $4 in your pocket before you sold any plants. So that means that when X is equal to zero, Y is equal to four. Now this beginning of the problem, we actually have a very important vocabulary word for it. We call that the Y intercept. Basically, it's the point on the y-axis, and that point is the beginning of the problem whenever we're talking about word problems. We're gonna talk a lot more about that later on. So now, now that we have a starting point, how do we start actually completing the table here? Well, it does tell you that for every three plants that you sell, you make a profit of $2. So one thing that we can do is sort of like mentally or by hand, sort of make this jump in our table and calculating how much money we have left over. So for example, from zero to, from zero, if I sell three plants, I'm basically adding a quantity of three plus three, and now I've sold a total of three plants. But that means that my profit goes up. So if I sell three plants, I'm making a profit of $2. So now I have a total of six. And we can continue this pattern every single time we add three. So if I add three more plants, I sold a total of six, but then that means I made a profit of two more dollars, which means that it's eight. And then likewise, I can do it again over here, add three more, and then finish up with a total of nine, and then go ahead and finish here with a total of $10. Now, could we continue the table? Absolutely, but just for the sake of the video, we're not. But you could always keep extending a table for as long as you want. But it's always good to have a good number of points that you can work with. So. What does the rate of change have to do with this example about cute little plants? Basically, remember, go back to the definition. Rate of change tells you, tells you the rate 
about how one quantity is changing with respect to another one. In this case, what are the two things that we're comparing? We're comparing the amount of money that we get with the amount of plants that we're selling. So this is where rate of change comes up. We are comparing the number of plants sold in our business to our total profits. Now, this is where we want to ask ourselves this. Is our rate of change positive or negative based on these numbers? Well, my X values are always going up by three and my Y values are always going up by two. So one way that you can think about rate of change is that you can think of rate of change as the change in Y over the change in X. And this more or less will tell you the quantity, the actual physical numerical value of the rate of change. So in this case, how much were our Y's changing by each time? Well, we were always adding by two, so this is gonna be positive two. Well, how much were our X's changing by? Well, our X's were changing by three, so it's always gonna be three at the bottom. So always simplify your rate of change as much as you can. This is already as simplified as it goes. So this right here, this number is a positive quantity. So that means that our rate of change is increasing or going up. That's basically what it means. That is the rate of change. Now, one last thing before we move on to the next example is that I wanna take these points and put them onto a graph and see what kind of line they make. So this is zero four, so the points right here. That's the y-intercept, three comma six, so three six is up here, six eight, here's six, we're going up to eight, and then nine ten. There's nine, we're going up to 10. And we're gonna go ahead and connect these points to the best of our ability. Okay, so our line's going up. Alrighty, so what does rate of change have to do with this example? Well, remember that rate of change is trying to tell you how one quantity is changing with respect to another. In this case, we were describing how our money kept going up as we kept selling more plants for our small plant business. So one key concept that you have to know about is that linear functions have what we call a constant rate of change meaning that the rate of change is always going to be the same or the pattern is always going to be the same for line functions. So in this example here, you know, you'll know you notice that this is always going up by three and on the Y values, you're always going up by two. It's always a constant, consistent uh, increase on both sides. That's what they mean by constant rate of change. And we're gonna talk about that more next time. Let's go ahead and move on to our next example here. You go to the store with $8 to buy some snacks. The store has a deal where every four bags of chips has a price of $2. Create a table and graph for this scenario. Let X be the bags of chips that you buy and Y the amount of money left over. So let's go ahead and underline some stuff. So $8, you go into the store with $8 and then four bags of chips has a price of $2. Okay, so again, let's go ahead and think about what the beginning of this problem would represent. In this case, the beginning of the problem would be the number eight, because before you even buy anything, you just showed up to the store with $8 in your pocket and you're ready to buy some chips. So now let's see if there's a pattern available to us in this problem that'll let us figure out the relationship between the bags of chips that we buy and the amount of money we have left over. Well, this is saying that for every four bags of chips that you buy, you're spending two of your dollars. So that means that if I were to add a quantity of four here, how much money am I losing? Well, I'm losing $2. So that means that my amount of money is going down. So this is going to be six. If I were to continue this pattern, plus four and then minus two, this will help me figure out the rest of the values in my table. So from here, this is going to be eight and then 12. And over here, this is going to be four and then two. What is the rate of change for this table? Well, the rate of change, which I'm gonna go ahead and abbreviate as ROC, basically is change in Y, so change in Y, divided by the change in X. So from here, what is our change in Y? Well, our change in Y is that we're always going down by two. So this is gonna be minus two. 
What is our change in X? Well, X is, represents the number of bags of chips, and my bags of chips are always increasing by four. So this is gonna be positive four. Now, we want to simplify this quantity. So this is going to be negative one half because two goes into two and four. So that means our rate of change this time is negative. So what does that tell you? That tells you that your quantities are decreasing over time. Because even though we're buying more bags of chips, our amount of money in our pocket is going down. Again, let's go ahead and take these points, put them into a graph and see what happens. So our first point is 0, 8. Our next point is 4, 6. Our next point is 8, 4. And we don't have enough space for 12, but we can sort of imagine where it would be. And then our last one is 12, 2. So then that's 10, 11, 12. We're gonna go up to the number two. And again, let's go ahead and connect these points and see what kind of line they make. So one question you might be asking yourself is, why did the previous graph give us a line that was going up, but why, and this graph is going down? Well, that comes down to what kind of rate of change you have. So if your rate of change ended up being positive, your graph is always going to be going up. But if your rate of change is negative, you should always expect your line to be going down because you're losing something, you're decreasing. So then that's the last kind of concept I want to talk to you guys here uh, to finish this off is depending on what kind of rate of change you have, you're going to have two distinctly different lines. So here's the idea. The idea is if you have a positive rate of change, your line is going to be going up from left to right. But if you have a negative rate of change, your line is going to be going down from left to right, which means that this is going to be increasing while the other one's going to be decreasing. Well, I hope you guys learned something new today. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll get to you as soon as I can. If you liked the video, give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more Algebra 1 videos. And as always, please take care and I'll see you guys next time.